Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto, your home for the most detailed motorcycle content on the net. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you like this content. So I've already published a review about this 2021 KTM 890 Adventure R Rally. It's a pretty special limited edition bike. And if you're interested in the bike, I hope you go check out that review, which I'll link somewhere down below here. Now for all the bikes that I buy and ride over long-term periods, I like to do these videos talking about the modifications and accessories that I've put on the bike. Now, full disclosure, there's some of these parts that I got free of charge, some of the parts I got a discount on, and some of the parts I paid full sticker price for. It's just a mix of all those options, but I always wanna tell you that right up front. The other thing is, if you want a way that doesn't cost you anything to support this channel, Big Rock Moto, please use the links in the video description and in my comments below that helps support the channel and doesn't cost you anything. All right, so I've set up this 890 Rally. For me, it's for longer distance, rough off-road touring. So here in the USA, we have something called the Backcountry Discovery Routes, and that's really kind of what I had in mind when I set this bike up. Now, another disclaimer, I'm always changing my setup. It's one of the things I love to do is go in the garage after work at night and play around with different parts, put different things on, try different setups. So as you see videos, photos of this bike uh, on my channel or social media throughout the time period that I've had it, you'll see different things on it. That's just how I am with my bikes. So. Uh, why don't we just start front to back? I think we'll just make it easier that way. So starting with the front tire. So the bike came with Continental TKC 80 tires, which I actually really like. They're a good tire for all around adventure use. However, uh, they don't last very long and there was actually a recall on these tires. So long story short, uh, I like Motaz tires for off-road adventure riding. So I've got the dual venture front tire. It's pretty good on the highway, not perfect, but pretty good. And off-road, it works great. Other thing I like about it, it's reversible. You can flip it around, run it in the opposite direction if you start to get that scalloping or leading edge wear, which is common with uh, these kinds of knobby tires on these heavy adventure bikes. The next thing I've got is the KTM Power Parts Headlight Guard. It's relatively affordable, as you'll find with most of the KTM parts, and it protects the headlight from getting broken by a rock. The next thing I have here is the Puige uh, windshield spoiler. This is, I believe, the medium size. Uh, I use these on a lot of different bikes. On this bike in particular, it helps tremendously to reduce the wind buffeting. So I run the stock windshield in the high position and I run the spoiler and I can adjust it. I can aim air at my helmet if I want more air. I can move the airflow up over me by, by twisting this adjustment here. So highly recommend that if you have one of these bikes, it works very, very well on this particular model. Let's talk about my navigation setup a little bit. So I use the Garmin Zumo XT. I have a mount on all three of my bikes. I need to buy another one now because I just bought a fourth motorcycle. But anyway, uh, I use this, I move this between bikes. So I buy the mounts for the bike and I just move the GPS around. On this bike, I'm using the Moto Pumps articulating mount. So I can unscrew this little knob and actually tilt the GPS uh, back and forth. And it doesn't interfere with the windshield unlike some of the GPS mounts that I've seen out there. So Moto Pumps was great to send it out to me and I'll obviously link that below, great company. They also make a really great tire inflator, which I'll link below too. And I do use their tire inflator. Let's move on to some of the handlebar controls that I have. So <laughs> I've done quite a bit here. I've gone to the Flex handlebars. There's a company called Fast Company that makes these and they flex up and down uh, they have these bushings here, these uh, rubber uh, bushings that you can uh, put in different firmness and adjust how much cushion you want. So over a long day of riding on rough terrain, I find that they reduce fatigue and they reduce the impact coming through to your upper body. I'm a fan of them. However, they are very expensive and they do add quite a bit of weight and it can make setting up your controls a little more complicated, although it works fine on this bike. So those are the caveats there. What else do I have? I have Barkbuster hand guards, which don't work perfectly with these flex bars, if I'm being honest, but I made them work anyway. I'm using the little Tusk flex bar adapters, so might work on that later, but they, but they work fine, and I love Barkbuster hand guards. I've also got a Scott steering stabilizer or steering damper. It's not a dampener that would be to make something wet. It's damp in terms of slowing the motion. So what it does, uh, I'm not gonna go into all of it, but it, it uh, dampens the steering and you can adjust it. So if you're riding in sand or if you hit a rock, uh, it just prevents the wheel from getting jarred out of your hands. It's just a nice thing to have when you're spending a lot of time off-road. I also have this on my 350 and on my uh, 690 that I recently purchased. So great items, however, not cheap. 
Couple other things I've got with the controls. I went uh, with the KTM Power Parts heated grips. Actually, the bike came with these when I bought the bike. I bought this bike with like 800 miles on it from the original owner. He'd never taken it off-road, so I got a good deal doing it that way. KTM heated grips, they integrate into the TFT dash and they work well, I'm, I'm happy with them. Of course, I'm also using the double take adventure mirrors. Uh, you can break these mirrors. I have definitely seen that happen. I know uh, maybe last year I said in a video that they're unbreakable, but I've seen people break them actually. But they work well for me and they don't vibrate. They give a clear view behind and I can adjust them uh, as I need to. All right, let's talk about this Moscow Moto Nomax tank bag. So I'm famous for switching around tank bags on the bike. Uh, they just sent out their Gnome tank bag to me as well. So I'm always playing around, but I really like the Nomax and it fits pretty well on the 890 being a larger bike. The reason I like the Nomax bag is because you have organization. It allows you to organize everything within different compartments. It also has a hydration bladder feature built in uh, and it can be used as a backpack, which is a feature that I've used when I go to uh, events like Overland Expo. I just take this off the bike, put it on my backpack, uh, put it on my back and I've got water and all my stuff in the bag. I like this bag. I've also got, you see these little blue uh, rubber straps here. These are called Volet straps and uh, they work with Moscow Moto, but they're their own company and they sent out a bunch of their straps for me to test. I love these Volet straps. I use them to like tighten down tool rows. I use them to tighten my uh, tent bag down to like squish it down. So they're a great adjustable strap, which you can use for a lot of different things. And I'll link them below as well. Moving down to some of the protection stuff on the bike. So I did go this time with the AXP skid plate. It's a very thick, heavy duty plastic and it mounts to the frame of the motorcycle. It does not mount to the engine at any point. So I do like that because if you take a hard impact with the bike, which hopefully you won't do, but if you do, then it's not gonna break your engine casing because it's mounted to the frame. And the plastic seems to be quiet in terms of rocks hitting it and uh, it has great coverage. So uh, I don't have any, any affiliation with them, but I, I do find this to be a great, a great skid plate and it's pretty easy to remove when you need to change oil or do something like that. So let's move on to some parts that Vanash Motorsports sent me. Vanash Motorsports is a small uh, independently owned company here in the USA. Really great guy, uh, Andrew, who owns the company. Um, really awesome guy to work with and he makes beautifully machined parts. So from Vanash Motorsports, what I have is their Adventure Foot Pegs, which you, they sell in two different versions, the set screw or dowel pin version, depending on how sharp you want the teeth. You can adjust the screws to adjust the angle. You can adjust the grip. The Adventure Pegs are a little bit lower than stock, so they give you a little more leg room. Uh, and I'll get to why I need that here in a minute because I've, I've got this low seat. So I really like the foot pegs, beautifully made foot pegs. I've also got their case saver. Uh, that protects, if the chain were to break, it protects the chain from going into the engine casing and, and breaking the engine casing. It also just looks really badass, pardon my French, with the orange anodizing there. Uh, also, I've got their brake lever tip. So the brake lever tip is larger. I got the one that's larger than stock. So I have a hard time with, uh, lar with my feet kind of always reaching that rear brake lever, especially when standing up. So I like a larger brake lever uh, tip and uh, it bolts on there and it's a great piece of equipment. Also from Banash Motorsports, I've got their rear brake disc guard, which uh, the rear brake discs on uh, off-road bikes are very vulnerable to rocks and logs and things. So having that on there prevents me from damaging my rear brake disc, which could be a real bummer if that happened to you on your ride. Let's talk about seating. So I play around with different seats all the time. So the 890 Rally came, comes with the KTM Rally seat, which is a tall bench style seat. And it's great for aggressive off-road riding because it allows you to stand up very easily. It uh, makes that easier transition and it gets you really up high. Uh, but it's not comfortable in my opinion and it makes the bike extremely tall. This bike already has taller suspension than a standard 890R and I just found it too tall. I, I'm five foot uh, 10, about 180 centimeters tall and it's a bit too tall for me. You can see that in my review video. So I put on the KTM Power Parts low ergo seat. KTM claims that it's more comfortable and also it's about, I think, three quarter inch lower than the standard seat on the 890 Adventure R. So compared to my rally seat, it's probably about an inch and a half lower than the rally seat. I used this on the Colorado BDR ride where we rode about 900 miles in like four or five days. And I was comfortable. Uh, I did have a cool cover over it, which does increase that height back a little bit, but the cool cover allows me to ventilate so I don't get as sweaty and I don't get sort of the rash on my bottom side. I know that's too much information, but these are real things that you deal with. Um, so I do like the cool cover, but I have it off right now just to kind of uh, show you the seat. Let's move on to the rear of the bike. So um, 
I've been switching the luggage setup around on this bike. Uh, for the BDR trip, I was using the Tusk Olympus bags. Uh, now I've switched over to the Moscow Moto Backcountry 35s. I also have a set of Lone Rider bags, and I'm also thinking of switching. I have the Moscow Moto Reckless 80, and I'm thinking of taking the racks off and switching to that. So suffice to say, I change my mind all the time. But the backcountry bags are definitely my favorite soft panniers of all time. They're amazingly well constructed, extremely modular, versatile. All the storage on them is waterproof. I have the pockets on both ends. Um, they're tough as nails. They come off super, super easy, and they're easy to pack, unlike the uh, Reckless bags. So I'm just a huge fan of them. They work amazing, and Moscow Moto is an incredible company. Uh, I've also got a Nelson rig. Uh, this is their smaller uh, tail bag which I'll link below. I also have the, the larger one, which sometimes I use, and that's mounted to a Perrin Moto rack. Perrin Moto makes really beautiful parts for motorcycles, especially for these bikes, so I've got their large tail rack on here. Also on this bike, I have the Wings Titanium Exhaust. Wings is a exhaust company uh, out of Europe, and they make beautifully crafted titanium exhaust at a very good price. So this bike actually came with that. The previous owner had done that. Uh, the bike, the factory bike, came with an Akrop Akropovich or Akropovic, however you say it, exhaust. Um, the owner had taken that off and put the wings on, and I'm happy with the wings. I can tune the sound. It's very light. It's compact. It looks great, although it's, now it's kind of hidden under these bags, but happy with that uh, exhaust. And yes, if you need to know, I do still have the catalytic converter in this bike. If you're familiar with these bikes, one common thing is to t put a mid-pipe in, which removes the catalytic converter, that supposedly decreases the heat uh, hitting your leg, although I didn't, I tried it, I didn't really find that to be the case. It seemed like just as hot as with the cat. And I also found it to be too loud. So uh, some people like it to each his own, uh, but also uh, just beware of your legality, legal issues there, emissions issues. I have the cat back in and I'm much happier now with the catalytic converter in place. And finally on the back of the bike, I'm using the Motaz Rowles rear tire. Uh, you know, for a long time, it was hard to find knobby tires for adventure bikes that would actually last like for three or four or 5,000 miles. A TKC 80, I can melt a TKC 80 on a bike like this in 1,200 miles, no, no joke. And so uh, the Rowles, you know, the Motaz tires, I can get at least a few thousand miles, maybe four or 5,000 miles, which is amazing to me uh, that a knobby tire can do that. So I love, I love them for that reason. Are they perfect on the road? No. There's other tires that will give you a better handling and ride on the street. But as an overall compromise, I think Motaz is really, really great. Well, I think that about wraps up my summary of all the uh, parts that I have on this bike. Uh, I, I'm very appreciative of all the companies that support Big Rock Moto. Like I mentioned, some of these parts I get for free, some I get a discount, and some I pay full price. It's just a mixed bag. But if you're one of those companies who's helped sponsor this bike and my other bikes in my garage or my other builds, thank you so much. It means the world to me uh, to have your support. And if you're out there uh, looking at any of these parts, again, please consider supporting these companies and also using any of my links below, uh, which is a free way it doesn't cost you anything and helps support Big Rock Moto content creation going forward. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please support the channel. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.